Okay, what we're going to be doing now is looking at the second lesson of the day, and that is we are going to be adding and subtracting fractions. Now, adding and subtracting fractions is a little bit more trickier, because um, there's a few steps we need to take into account that we didn't need to with multiplying and dividing. First thing is the denominators need to be the same when we add and subtract fractions. Well, that's great, because these are the same, but the problem is, on number one it says, is this correct? And the answer is no, because you only add the numerators. And put uh, only add or subtract the numerators. Okay, so right here, this is basically saying if you were to have a, you know, a little fraction bar right here, uh, one, two, three, four. This is a really bad rough sketch of this, but one, two, three, four. So you see there's five pieces. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Three fifths uh, would represent this one to have one, two, three of these sections full. And this one over here would represent having one, two, three, four sections full. And it's basically saying if we were to combine these, if we were to combine these, how much would we have uh, full? And essentially what it would be is, well, if I took one of these pieces and moved it here, I would then have, I'm going to just erase this, I would then have seven fifths. So I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it takes five pieces to make a hole. Okay, that's a little rough sketch for that. So let's go and look at these. So how do I uh, get a? How do I add and subtract uh, fractions? So the first step is always find a common denominator. And then what we're going to do is second step is add or subtract numerators. And we're going to leave denominators the same. And then what we're going to do is our final step is reduce once we added the two fractions. So let's go ahead and look at this now. My first fraction is 3 over 4, and I'm going to add that to 5 over 8. Now, we can't add these yet because the denominators are not the same. So what we need to do is find a common denominator. So if you're looking at the multiplication tables of 8, because that's this first denominator, it would be 8, 16, 24. And then if you looked at the uh, multiplication tables for 4, it would be 4, 8, 12. You might have said, hey, wait a second, look has a common denominator of 8. Well, I don't need to do anything with 5 eighths because it already has that denominator. And what I need to do with the first fraction is multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. And this would give me then 6 over 8. So then when I add these, remember we only have the numerators to get 11 over 8. You double check to see if you can reduce, and you cannot. It is okay to leave your answer as an improper fraction. All right, so now very first step always. Our very first step is turn mixed number into improper fraction. And then I'm just going to put for step two is solve. And I'm going to say C question one. C question number two. Because then we're going to follow those instructions. So when I said our very first step, I meant to say the very first step one, when we have mixed numbers. So before we even begin, remember you take the whole number and multiply it by the denominator. So two times five is ten. This is going to give me twelve over five. Second fraction, 1 times 3 is 3. This will give me 4 over 3. Similar, guys, I need to find what is the common denominator of 5 and 3. Some of us might be able to tell right away, but if not, just do the multiplication table of the first denominator. So 
like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, so on and so forth. And the second one is 3. So it would be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. You might, and then you might say, oh, look, right here we have a 15, we have a 15. Right here it's in the 1, 2, 3rd spot. So with my denominator of 5, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. This will give me 36 over 15. Second stop, what we're going to do is look at it here, and it is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th spot. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 5. This would give me then 20 over 15. So when I add these, I just add my numerators to get 56 over 15. Then you're done. No need to do anything else. You can check to see if they reduce, uh, but they do not. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to add a few fractions, and then we're going to look at subtraction, and then we'll be done with this video. So first things first, um, I'm going to see if I can add these. I cannot because the denominators do not match. And you're like, okay, well, if I multiply this one by 2 over 2, remember, whatever we multiply the top with, multiply the bottom, and vice versa. And the reason why I chose to multiply by 2 over 2 is because this will give me 4 over 10. When I add that, I'm going to add that to 7 over 10, and look at that, they have the same denominator. Remember, we only add the numerators to get 11 over 10, and that's my final answer. Could you write 1 and 1 tenth if you turn this improper fraction into a mixed number? Yes, they are, are equivalent, but you do not need to do that. All right, now this one's a little tricky, so I'm going to write my little tables here. So if I looked at 5 ninths, I'm going to look at the denominator of 9, and uh, 1 over 6, I'm going to look at my denominator of 6. So let's go ahead and look at this then. Multiplication tables of 9 is 9. 18, 27, 36. Multiplication tables of 6 are 6, 12, 18, 24, so on and so forth. And you might say, oh, look at that, 18. This is on the second spot where I had the denominator of 9, so I just multiply the top and the bottom by 2. And then I look at the other fraction, I'm like, oh, look at that. It's the third spot, so I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3 here. This will give me 10 over 18 plus 3 over 18. When I multiply straight, or excuse me, when I add straight across, that will give me 13 over 18. Similar to the previous one, now I have an improper fraction. So we got 2 times 2. I have a mixed number that I need to turn into an improper fraction, I should say. So 2 times 2 is 4. Add that to get 5 over 2 plus 3 over 8. So if you need to make the multiplication table, that's no problem. It'd be 2, 4, 6, 8. The multiplication table is 8 is 8, 16, but you can stop right there because you notice you have an 8 on both of them. So you don't need to do anything with the second fraction, but the first fraction you'd have to multiply by 4. This would give me 20 over 8 plus 3 over 8, which equals 23 over 8. Smiley faces for everyone. All right, last one, or last type of problem, I should say, is subtraction. Now, good news, guys, is the steps are exactly the same, so no need to write anything here in the ex explanation. So we're going to say uh, C number 3. And the only difference, guys, is instead of adding, all we're going to do is subtract. So I have an improper fraction here, so I'm going to turn that into a mixed number. So 1 times 9 is 9. I'm going to add that to the numerator. This will give me then 11 over 9 minus 2 over 3. We need a common denominator, so I look at here, this is 9, this is 3. And you might say, oh, if I just multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3, this would give me 6 over 9. And I still have 11 over 9. And what I'm going to do is subtract just the numerator. So 6 minus 9 is, excuse me, 11 minus 6 is 5 over 9. That's your final answer. Okay. So let's go and look at another one. This one's tricky when it's just a whole number, but the process continues. This one is really 1 over 1. So if I have 1 over 1, because remember 1 divided by 1 is just 1, I'm going to minus 3 fourths. Now I need these to have this common denominator, so what I'm going to do is take that th uh, 1 over 1, I'm going to multiply it by 4 over 4. This would give me 4 over 4 minus 3 over 4. Just as a reminder, guys, 1 equals 1 over 1, which is the same thing as 4 over 4. Because remember, 4 divided by 4 is just 1. 
1 divided by 1 is just 1. So they're all equivalent. So now that they're the same denominator, I can go ahead and subtract my numerators to get me 1 over 4. Okay. All right. So let's go and look at a few of these together. First step, let's turn this into an improper fraction. 1 times 6 is 6, plus 2 is 8 over 6 minus 1 half. I need a common denominator, and I say, hey, look at this. If I multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3, I would have 8, 6 minus 3 over 6. So when I subtract these, then I'm going to get 5 over 6. Okay? 8 subtract minus 3 is 5. Keep the denominators the same. Over here now, a little different one, and I can't really think what I need to multiply 3 by to make it equal 8, because they don't go into each other. So what we're going to do is let's start with 8, and the multiplication table of 8 is 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. Multiplication table of 3 is 3, 6, 9, 12, 18, 21, 24. I forgot 15. Okay. So now when I look at this, this is the 1, 2, oh, so what I hopefully notice is they have a 24 in common. So that's going to be my denominator on both of these. So how did I get those 24s? Well, I took the first number, the first fraction, and I multiplied it by 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 3 is 24. Minus, now how did I turn this 3 into 24? Well, I multiplied it by 8. 1 times 8 is 8, 3 times 8 is 24. So now when I add or subtract fractions, since my denominator is the same, it's going to stay the same, and 9 minus 8 is just 1. That's your final answer. All right, what about this one? A little tricky, but not too bad once we figure it out. How do I write 2 as a fraction? It's not 2 over 2, that would be incorrect. It would just be 2 over 1. So to turn any whole number into a fraction, you just put it over 1. So if I have 2 over 1 minus 4 sevenths, you can't subtract these right now because they have a different denominator. So you need to take the first fraction and multiply the numerator and the denominator by 7. This would give me 14 over 7 minus 4 over 7. So then when you subtract these, you just do 14 minus 4, which is 10 over 7. That's your final answer. All right, guys, I think that's enough practice for right now. You are going to have um, some homework that I want you to start that's going to be due on Thursday. So you can go and get started on it right now. Um, so double check the daily schedule um, and uh, Google Classroom to see what the exact homework is. See you guys later.